Good morning, baseball gamer. This is Kurt Berglund, and it's Tuesday, and that means it's Kurt Berglund's unboxing, demo, and what has Kurt learned this week day. All was brought to you by Nature's Path Toaster Pastries. Mmm, mmm. Do you find your Pop-Tart is limp, even unsatisfactory? Well, then what you're looking for is right here. Nature's Path Toaster Pastries. Always organic. Where do they find Pop-Tarts in nature? I don't know, but they're delicious. Mmm, mmm, and good for you. Try them. The demo today is Repro Sports Baseball. Repro Sports, R-E-P-R-O comes in a box looks like this I unboxed it last week and we're gonna do this in two parts this week the basic game next week the advanced game the purchase comes this is the starter set which comes with all the game parts plus four teams to try out four teams to try out the 27 Tigers the 73 A's and Mets, and the 61 Yankees. So I'm going to go with the 73 Mets and the 61 Yankees for this demo, and I know, I know, heads are going to explode all over this great land of ours. Why? Because we can't use as-played lineups. Mm -mm. That's going to be a problem. So my advice for you, if you really are stuck on as-played lineups, do this while you watch so that your head doesn't explode. Okay, let's go over what the cards look like and gameplay for the basic game of Rep Row Baseball. I'm going to shake the camera while I do this, but I'm going to show you how I've set up my play area for this game. I have my two teams right here, my two lineups. There is, for every team, a ballpark card, so that's handy. There are two decks that you need, an out results deck, and the out results deck tells you when it's an out, based on where the runners are, what the outcome is. All right, so we'll be looking at that more. Then there are range plays, and we'll talk about those. Then they provide, very nicely, the fielding reference cards. So you don't have to look up on your player cards every time there's a ball hit to a defender and you need to do a fielding check. You don't have to look up their individual card. You can just refer to the fielding reference cards. Very nice. Very nice and good. There are which I'm keeping off camera, pitcher hitting cards that you need, but there are eight of them for each uh, team, two for each, two sets per game that's included, and then all the charts are included as well. With the game, you need two D10s plus a D20. I'm going to be reading the black die first, the blue die second. I don't think it matters because they're D10s. And then, of course, sometimes we will be needing the D20. I'm going to roll all three at the same time. I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but that's what we're going to do. Let's look at the team card, the ballpark card. Tells you the manager, a picture of the stadium, which is very nice, and the record of the team. There is also... An important number here that we'll go into later for that ballpark. All right. Now, first let's go through the lineups. The, the, I'm putting this game in Yankee Stadium, as you can see. So this is the lineup for the Mets. It's their World Series lineup against a left-handed pitcher. Actually, against all pitchers, this is what Yogi Berra used. Wayne Garrett leads off at third. Now, when you look at this <coughs> card, you can see that they tell you which way the batter bats. It gives you the positions that he played, error numbers, 
His arm is rated, and then they give you some stats in the lower left corner. The at-bat, so what you do, well, we'll go into this, but these are the control numbers for the batter against left-handed pitching and against right-handed pitching. And we'll show you how this works. So leading off for the Mets will be Garrett at third, batting second, Mion at second. Betting third, Staub and right. Betting fourth, Jones and left. Betting fifth, Milner at first. Betting sixth, Grody catching. Betting seventh, Hahn in center. Betting eighth, Harrelson at short. And betting ninth will be Seaver on the mound. For the, for the Yankees, this is the, 60, the traditional 61 Yankee lineup that you know. Richardson at second, Kubek at short, batting second, Maris in right, Mantle in center, Barra in left, Howard uh, doing the catching, Scourin at first, and as soon as my fingers work, Boyer at third. On the mound will be Whitey Ford. All right, so let's show you how this works. The pitcher's number that's important here varies against righties and lefties. So this is his control number against lefties. This is his control number against righties. The D20 is what plays here. So you take Garrett is facing a left-handed pitcher. Ford is facing a left-handed batter. We know that because Garrett's a lefty, right? Says so right here. And we know Ford's a lefty because it tells us right there. So you add these two numbers, the nine plus the four makes 13, even I know that. Remember friends, there are three kinds of, the, of people in the world, those that can do math and those that cannot. Uh, nine plus four is 13, so if it's 13 or less on this D20, then we're gonna look at Whitey's column. If it's 14 to 20, then we're gonna look at Garrett's column. So let's roll this and see what we get. We get an eight and a nine. So this is the eight. So we know we're looking on Whitey's card. And we know the result is a zero nine because I'm reading the zero for the black first and the nine and the blue second. All right, so these columns work like this. This is the result. This is the play result. This is when Whitey is well, is not fatigued. This is the, where we look for the numbers. This is where we look when there are men on base. And this is where we look when Whitey's tired. Now, how do we know he's tired? Well, he gets 30 batters before he can be tired. Now, if he's pitching well, which is three runs or less, he can keep going in the normal column. But if he's not, and he's over 30 batters, he's in the tired column and he gets hammered. You gotta get your pitcher out of there when they're tired. All right, so we're looking now at the normal. We, one more time, nine plus four is 13. Eight is less than 13, so we're looking on Whitey's card. A nine result on a normal is a hit by pitch. So he plunks Garrett with the first pitch of the game or first outcome of the game, and that's all you need to start playing repro baseball. Let's do another batter and see what Felix Mian does. So Felix Mian is up, and I'm talking like Lindsey Nelson. Actually, nobody can talk like Lindsey Nelson. Nobody ever talked like Lindsey Nelson. All right, so here we go. Mian is up. Garrett is on base, on first base. All right, so let's look here. Mian is a right-handed batter. We know that because it says R right here, and plus we remember Felix. Ford, of course, is still a left-handed pitcher, just like he was when he faced Wayne Garrett. So we're looking at the right side here. It's a right-handed, a left-handed pitcher, right-handed batter. Eight plus three is 11, and we remember, there's three kinds of people in the world, those that can add and those that can't. So this, the first we look at the D20, so it's an 11. Three plus eight is 11. 
This is 11 or less, so it still goes to Whitey Ford's column. There is a man on base. 62 is our number. So we're going to have an out because 62 falls between 46 and 86. We're in the out range. So now what we need to do is to look at the out results deck. How do we know we have an out results deck? Well, the cards tell us so. Okay, so we turn over a card. Now, when you read the out results deck, we get a rare play. Ooh-hoo, this is gonna be fun. All right, so the rare play chart looks like this. So first, this is the rare play chart. We're gonna re-roll our two D10s. And we get a 15, all right? So we're gonna look at the result chart RP1. RP1 is right here, all right? So we need to get another roll And that's a 41. So a 41 falls here. And that would be a number five. All right, so a number five, ignore if no runners. The lead runner is picked off if rated C, D, E, A or B runner gets back safely. All right. So we got to look at Wayne Garrett and see if he gets back. Wayne Garrett's running rating. Get this in a good spot here. Base running rating is a C. So Garrett is picked off by Whitey Ford. One to three. So that is our rare play. Now, suppose that Garrett had been on first base and we didn't draw a rare play card from our out results deck. Man, to, man on first, which is where Garrett was. Mion's result would have been a line out to shortstop. That's it. All right. So now, Mion stays up. We re roll. And it's a 17. A 17 is more than 13. Eight plus, I'm sorry, more than 11. 8 plus 3 is 11. That's Ford's control range. Mion is 12 to 20 because he's not, he's more than 11. This is a 17. So this tells us that it is on Mion's card. So 95 makes it an X out. An X out in the basic game is just an out. In the advanced game, it would be a range check. Get to the kitchen. It's a range check. But this is the basic game, so we just do an out. We'll do the advanced game next week. Here's our basic game. The bases are empty, and it's a ground out to shortstop with the bases empty. Ground out to shortstop. Okay, but when you look at these cards and you see a highlighted outcome like this, you know that you need to do an error check. All right, so this is a ground out to shortstop, but did Tony Kubek make an error? All right, so let's find out. We look at our fielding reference card because we don't have to look up, we don't have to look up Tony's uh, rating. He is an A6. All right, so for shortstop, we have, he is a six. This is our column. And we re-roll the D20.
we don't re-roll the d20. We re-roll the two d10s and we add them together. So let's do that. Kubek is a six. Six plus two is eight. So we look at the eight and it's an out. All right, so Mion is retired on a grounder to short. All right, now get some more light on the situation here. Staub at the plate, there's two outs and Ford is going to pitch to him. We know that the control number for Ford is nine plus three is a 12. So 12 or less gives you Ford's card. 13 to 20 gives you Staub's. There's no reward. It's a nine and a 67. So that's on Ford's card because it's less than 12. And a 60, 67 is in the out range. So now we draw a card for the out results deck and it's a ground out to shortstop. So we have to do an error check because the result is highlighted right there. All right. So we roll our two D10s. We remember Kubek is still a six and we rolled a 12. All right, so the six goes down to 12 and he's out. So that is a one, two, three first inning of sorts for Whitey Ford. A walk, a pickoff and two ground outs make for a first inning for Ford. All right, now the Yankees are gonna come to the plate and Seaver gets his first shot on the mound. Seaver is, as you can see from his cards, a more dominant pitcher than Ford. In 73, Seaver was more dominant than Ford in 61. Now I understand that there's a way that these are normalized. I haven't found it yet in the instructions. So I'm still working on that, but I understand that is a feature of the game. All right, so Richardson is up. Seaver's on the mound. He's a right-handed batter. We know that because it says there. We know that Seaver throws righty because God bless you if you don't remember that. Then he's pitching against a right-handed batter. So as he's working with his 11, Richardson is against a right-handed pitcher. So he's working with his six. So Seaver's going to control the outcome if it's a 17 or less. Richardson, if it's an 18, 19, or 20. All right, so it's a six, so we know Seaver controls it. It's a 54 for the result. We're looking in the normal column because there are not men on base and nobody's, and his Seaver is not tired. So, and we look at Seaver's uh, rating is 32. So he's got 32 batters he can face before fatigue, unless of course, he allows three runs or less, in which case he keeps cruising under the normal rating, the normal column. So we're looking at 54 and it's the out range. So we pull a number from our out results deck and it's a fly out to left field. I don't know if you can see that very well. I'm trying to give you some light. Fly out to left field under bases empty. So Richardson is out to Cleon Jones. And there's one out for the Yankee first. Now it's Tony Kubek. All right, Kubek against a right-handed pitcher is a three. Seaver's still an 11, so 14 or less, it's on Seaver's card. 15 to 20, it's on Kubek's. 10, so it's on Seaver's card. 76 is in the out range. We draw an out result deck and we get a fly out to left field. Another fly out to Cleon Jones. I promise you I'm not using the same cards over and over and over again. Now it's Roger Maris against Seaver. All right, so Maris is a zero against right-handed pitchers. So Seaver controls if it's one to 11. Maris if it's 12 to 20. It's a one, so that's Seaver. 45 makes it a strikeout because it's in the Seaver's strikeout range of 26 to 46. 
And that concludes the first inning for the Yankees. Alrighty. Now we got Whitey Ford coming back out to face the 73 Mets, Cleon Jones. Numbers here are eight because Jones is a right-handed batter and three because Jones is a left is facing a left-handed pitcher. So it's 11. Ford controls if it's zero to, or if it's, sorry, one to 11. It's a five, Ford controls, it's a 53. And the 53 puts him in the out column. The out column is a ground out to shortstop, 6-3, and we have one out in the Mets second. Now, it's first baseman John Milner. Eight, so it's Ford, 26. 26 is a hit. All right, so to do a hit, we come back to the hitter's card and we re-roll. So what happens here is we look at column two, we re-roll the two D10s and it's gonna fall somewhere in this range. So let's see what Milner does. It's an 80. And 80 means it falls, we look at, to resolve it, we look at the 80, which falls in Milner's home run range. So Milner has just taken Whitey Ford to the right field bleachers in Yankee Stadium. It's one nothing Mets. Alrighty, now it's Grody, Mets catcher. Four uh, facing the left-handed pitcher, eight facing the right-handed batter, so 12 or less. Ford controls, it's an eight, so Ford controls. It's a 51, and the 51 is on the out deck. All right, so the out deck is a, with bases empty, is a ground out to third base. Ground out to third base. All right, so five, three, two gone in the Mets second. Now it's Han, nobody aboard. Facing a lefty, he's a four. Ford facing a right-handed batter, he's an eight. So 12 or less. Don't worry about how that's spelled. It's misspelled, but that's okay. And now Ford, 12, so it's Ford, 80, puts it in the out column, right there. This is a ground out to the pitcher, but it's highlighted, so we know we have to do an error check for Ford. Now we look at Ford's um, defensive rating, it's an A9, so we look at a nine on the out check, on the out uh, chart. We roll the two D10s and add them together. We get a four. And now we look at a nine and a four, and there's an out. For Whitey, he makes the play to first base, and that's three outs. All right, so the Mets score one. In the second inning, they lead one nothing. Go to the bottom of the second. When we get a base runner on, we'll do some strategy and show you how that works. Mantle is up, then Barra, then Howard in the Yankee second inning. This is Repro Baseball. All right. Basic version, basic version. So Mantle is a zero against right-handed pitchers. So. Seaver's facing a left-handed batter, so Seaver controls the outcome if it's zero, if it's one to ten. This is a four, so it's on Seaver's column. Seventy-five is the number. It's an out result because we're looking right here at the out results for Seaver. 
We draw a card from the out results deck. And this is a ground out to shortstop, 6-3. And there's one gone in the Yankee second. Now it's Yogi. Seaver pitching to his manager. Heads exploding all over the world. All right, three, because he's facing a right-handed pitcher. 10, because he's facing a left-handed batter. 13 or less, it's on Seaver's card, but it's not on Seaver's card. It's on Yogi's card. We get a 99, which is on the X out, which would be a range check. But it's not a range play. So we're going to look at the, because we're playing the basic game. So this is the out range. So we look at the out results deck. And this tells us it's a fly out to Cleon Jones. Two gone in the second inning. Next up, Elston Howard. All right, so Howard, two, a right handed, facing a right handed pitcher. Howard is a right handed batter, so 13 or less. It's controlled by Seaver, but it's not 13 or less. It's an 18, so it's on Howard's card. We get a 13 result. It's a hit, but what kind of hit is it? Well, to determine, it's between 10 and 39. A 13 is between 10 and 39. So now we have to re-roll and look at column two. To do that, we re-roll our D10s and we get a 90. That puts it in Howard's home run range and Howard has just taken Tom Seaver to the left field lower deck and it's 1-1 one, one. and I hope that was clear how that happened let me try that again we rolled a 16 so we know it wasn't controlled by Seaver because Seaver controls 13 or less we rolled a hit result for Howard then but the hit doesn't tell us anything we have to re-roll in the hit column and see what the result is. We rolled a 90 and it's gone. All right, now Scourin is up with two outs and nobody aboard. Scourin is a four, Seaver's facing a right-handed batter, so it's 15 or less he controls. We rolled a six, so it's on Seaver's card. We have a 21, that's a hit. So we re-roll and look at Howard. Now look at Scourin's card. It's a 78, and Scourin doubles. Now the asterisk uh, next to the two base hit. Means that they get an automatic two base advance. Now, if there's no asterisk next to it, then you can, in the advanced game, try to send your runner to an extra base. So this would be send an extra base. This means he's limited to a two base advance. So it's a double for Scourin, and this is advanced game, but there's nobody on, so it doesn't matter. But in the advanced game, you can try and score your runner from home. If you have one to home, score your runner from first, if you have one at first, this means he's got to stop at third in the advanced game. In the basic game, everybody's stopping at third. And that's what we're doing today anyway. All right, Boyer's up with two outs. Ford is on deck, the pitch from Seaver. 16 or less is controlled by Tom. It's a 17, so it's controlled by Boyer. 38 is a strikeout result for Cleet, and that ends the inning. So solo homers in the top half and the bottom half of the second result in a tie score 
after two innings. I promise you as soon as we get a base runner on, we'll do some strategy, whether it makes sense to do it or not. Ford is on the mound now. He's facing Harrelson Seaver, and then the top of the order with Wayne Garrett. The pitch to Bud is an 11. All right, so Bud is a switch hitter. He's facing a left-handed pitcher, so he's a three. Ford is facing a right-handed batter, so 11 or less. Whitey controls it. We rolled a 49. It's an out result on Whitey's card. So now we draw a card from the out result deck, and it's a fly out to left. Next up, Seaver. This is the pitcher's hitting card. Seaver is a hitting card seven. Looks the same, just a little bit scrunched. Seven, he's a right-handed batter, plus eight means Whitey controls it. If it's a 15 or less, it's a four, so he controls it. The roll is a 59, it's an out result. And this is a ground out to shortstop, and it's not highlighted, so we don't have to do an error check. Two gone in the third. Now it's Garrett. Okay, facing a... Four, four facing a left-handed batter. Nine, 13 or less. Garrett controls it. I'm sorry, Ford controls it if it's 13 or less. We rolled a 19. It's a 98. It's an out result. Be a range check if we were playing advanced, but we're not today. We'll do that next Tuesday. And this is a ground out to third base with the bases empty. That's three outs in the third. After two and a half innings, it's 1-1 one, one between these two great teams. All right. Seaver's out. It'll be Ford, Richardson, and Kubek for the Yankees. Waiting to get a base runner here. And do some strategy. All right. Two, so we have an eight for Whitey. He is a left-handed batter. So 18 or less controlled by Seaver. It's a two. We get a 58 on Tom's card. It's an out result. And it's a grumbacker to Seaver for a one to three put up. Next up, Bobby Richardson. All right, now Richardson facing a right-handed pitcher is a six, Seaver is an 11, so 17 or less, Seaver controls the outcome. It's a 20, so Richardson does. A 29 makes it a hit. So Bobby's gonna get a hit. Let's see what he does. It's a 0-4, which is a single. Between one and 64 is a single. Richardson gets a single and he's aboard. So now we'll do some strategy. All right. In the basic game, the basic game and the advanced game have different stealing systems. And this is, and so we'll do the advanced stealing system. Uh, we're gonna do two examples here of what you can do with base runners. Um, first, we're gonna have Richardson try and steal in the basic game, and then we're gonna have Kubek do a hit and run. So first, we'll do the steal. So, in the basic game, very straightforward stealing procedure. We look first at Richardson's stealing rating, which is a C. All right, now we roll our two D10s and look at this chart. The C tells us a one to 40 is safe. On every steal attempt, if we roll a 99, there is an error on the shortstop or the second baseman. On a double zero, there's an error on the catcher. But one to 40, he's safe. Oops, I rolled my D20. It's an eight and a 28. So for that, 
a 28 would be within his safe range, and Richardson would steal second. All right, now, suppose we didn't want to send Bobby on a steal. Suppose we wanted to do a bunt. Well, for that, we would look at the next man up and look at his bunt rating, which is a B for Tony Kubek, a B bunt rating. All right, now we have a sacrifice table. We have a man on first. We find he's a B bunter. We find where the man is, and then we roll our two D10s. And we get a 64. So a 64 falls in here, in this range. Let me look over here. Single, beats out bunt. And the runner gets to third. All right. So Richardson runs like a madman and gets to third base. Now, suppose we wanted to do a hit and run. Kubek's rating for hit and run is a D. I'm sorry, I looked at the wrong sacrifice column. Sacrifice bunt is an A, which is what I should have looked at. An A, bunter. We rolled a 64, he beats out the bunt, runner to third, same result. Okay, now it's hit and run. Kubek is a D. This is his column in the hit and run chart. Let's roll this and see what happens. It's a 91 on the hit and run chart. We look all the way down at the bottom. It's a ground ball double play. Runners advance if it's not the last out. Four, six, three. So it's a bad hit and run result. So for each batter, what you get is a steal rating, a base running rating, a hit and run rating, and a sacrifice rating. I just demonstrated the steal for Richardson the hit and run, uh, the sacrifice, and then the hit and run rating, the hit and run option. So you have your three options for the basic game for uh, strategy on offense. All right, now let's roll this and we'll finish the third inning and that will conclude our basic game, uh, our basic game demo for this week. Next week we'll do the advanced game demo. Then if you want, we can do a full game a full game on the channel if you're interested in that. Okay, so a 20 becomes a hit for Kubek. Resolved by re-rolling a 96, and Tony Kubek just went yard. So it's 3-1 Yankees in the bottom of the third. Now it's Maris. There's one man out. 12 means Maris controls. Right-handed pitcher, left-handed batter, 10 or less. Seaver controls as a 12, so it's Maris. A 91 is an out result. That's a fly out to center field, two gone. And now it'll be Mantle. Two outs, bottom of the third, 3-1 Yankees. The pitch, 19, so right-handed pitcher, left-handed batter, zero to, one to 10, controlled by Seaver. 64 is Mantle. It's an out result. And that's a fly out to center field with the bases empty. That concludes our three-inning demo of basic version of Repro Baseball. There are charts and uh, uh, that are not we have not used for base runner advancement and for the advanced game. Uh, but I wanted to keep this try and keep this a little bit condensed uh, in our first walkthrough of Repro Baseball. You've got the basics of the game now. The control number for the pitcher is the key thing, but paying attention to the fatigue rating, how many batters he can face before he can become tired. Again, 
barring a good pitching outcome, and then he can just keep going. Fatigue numbers for relievers can't be stretched. So if a reliever is doing well, you still have to go by his fatigue number, and he should be removed after he hits it. So I want to give you an example of what that would look like. Um, let's do one of my favorite relievers. We'll do Tug McGraw. His relief rating is four. And you can see that in the upper left corner, I hope. And RR is four. He also started some games when he was having trouble in the 73 season. And Yogi was trying to get him out of a funk. He had him start some games. He's got a starting rating of nine. And he's got a relief rating of four. After that, they recommend that you pull your reliever. But there is a tired column for relievers. There is no way for a relief pitcher to extend their time as a normal pitcher. So if they're pitching well, it doesn't matter. They st when they hit their fatigue, they become tired. Um, we'll look more at ballparks under the advanced game and then look at the advanced rules for range checks on defense and how that works. Saw a little bit of it today. Uh, that's Repro Baseball. They have college football and pro football at their website as well. Um, I hope you've liked the video. We do a demo every Tuesday. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a good day. My name is Kurt Berglund. Please subscribe to keep up with all of our demos. So long, everybody.